Welcome to the March 22nd Prometheus Functional Update. Uh, I'm Ben, I'm the Prometheus lead, uh, and we also have Joshua Lambert, our product manager on the team, and Kevin Lida and Julius Volz, our engineers on the team. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we had a great 9.0. Uh, we delivered the first um, iteration of Prometheus uh, in 9.0. Uh, we included Prometheus on by default uh, and a bunch of exporters so that we can get data out of various components. Uh, and we also integrated uh, uh, some basic, basic functionality to allow users to see Prometheus metrics uh, uh, for apps deployed to Kubernetes. Um, that was totally great. We got uh, a lot of stuff done. Um, so we got some simple project uh, integrations. So you can select a Prometheus server um, uh, and some basic metrics. Uh, nothing super fancy, uh, but it's it's a really great functional start to to integrating Prometheus in uh, 9.0. Uh, so next up, what's coming in 9.1? Uh, we're going to improve the um, uh, we're going to improve the amount of uh, data that we give back to the user by uh, giving, give, putting graphs on the merge requests so that you can see uh, bef a before and after picture of, the, uh, of, a, of a merge request. Uh, and then uh, additionally, in the code itself, we're, we've been working on implementing a uh, Ruby unicorn uh, Improvement to the uh, get or the Prometheus Ruby library, and we'll be we're hoping to be able to get that integrated so that we can get uh, direct metrics out of uh, out of the GitLab install without having to go through InfluxDB or other metric systems for push metrics. Um, and then we're also going to be improving the uh, user experience for uh, metrics pages. Uh, another nice thing that we're going to do for nine one is we're going to have a better onboarding experience. So when, when users haven't configured Prometheus, they'll be directed to be able to enable it uh, uh, more easily and with a nice uh, interactive way instead of having to do a lot of manual configuration changes. Uh, and here's what we uh, have for the metrics pages um, that we're, we're going to be improving on. Uh, and uh, more longer term, we're going to be doing more auto deployment of Prometheus uh, and better integrate with the, the deploy board. Uh, we're, we're, we've also been spending some time working on Prometheus in GitLab.com production, uh, also get, uh, get hosted. Uh, we've made a number of improvements to the, the dashboards, we made improved the alerts, uh, and we upgraded the Prometheus servers in production. Uh, but we still have a few performance things that we want to fix in the Prometheus server itself. Although uh, I think we have we we just found uh, one of the problems there this afternoon, um, and then we also want to improve the instrumentation uh, across the board and and really really get good metrics out of GitLab.com. Uh, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. This was a very simple, quick, functional update. Uh, let's uh, let's go to questions. Anything in the chat? Where's the chat window? Hey Ben, um, um, this, thanks for the update, and I'm, I'm so excited about all the progress. In the in the blog post for 9.0, we talk about environment monitoring, but we don't talk about application monitoring. Is that because we already had that, but now it's enabled by default, or why is that? Uh, no, we uh, so it. Uh, I guess uh, so. We're one of the things that we'll be, we're going to be adding, I believe, um, is uh, we're going to be adding the ability to add custom queries to the uh, to the interface so that uh, users get. Well, they'll they'll be given the environment monitoring by default for CPU and memory and and things like that. But we're we're going to be adding a custom query interface so that users can get application monitoring. Okay, that's pretty cool. Is, should we add that to the to the blog post, or is that is that there lower? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't have the answer to that. Yeah, so Sid, um, this is Josh. Uh, 
we can definitely add it. Um, the reason why we settled it in environment monitoring was just because right now it monitors your, sorry, your CICD environments. Um, I thought that was a uh, relatively, um, you know, uh, app title, but we can change it to application monitoring if that's more clear for sure. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's take this maybe offline. Let's uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you a call after this uh, after this uh, this call. Any other questions? Uh, somebody asked about uh, CE versus EE. We're mostly uh, we're mostly focusing on CE stuff right now. Um, and Jim says, I'm wondering why the, okay, hold, hold on. Let's, let's, uh, Jim, do you want to talk about this a little more? I'm not sure what, the what the, what, what the question is there. No, no real question. I, I, I just wasn't sure what Neil Soft was, if we, anybody was talking to them. So I'll let you know what they say. They signed up for an account yesterday. Okay. Um, uh, why are the graphs uh, are on the MR, given that this might be a lot of data? Um, uh, I guess I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure what the, what the what the, the issue is there. Um, the, the, the graphs are, uh, I, I believe are a separate tab on the merge request. So it's, it's not, uh, it's not in the way as far as I know. Uh, uh, Mike, what do you want to know more about uh, Kubernetes? I don't know. You just you just mentioned it pretty quickly. I mean, I barely heard what you said about it, so I just wondering. Uh, uh, ba basically, uh, in in order to get the uh, the per project metrics, where uh, it's quite complicated to to integrate with ran, uh, random different deploys of Prometheus metrics data. So we focused on uh, integrating with the Kubernetes style deployment from CI. Uh, so merge uh, projects go into a merge request, go into CI, go into and are deployed on Kubernetes. And Kubernetes provides really good uh, uh, per project metrics. So it's easy to pick out which which uh, it's really easy to craft the query that we need to get from Prometheus to get the data about a specific project from Kubernetes. And that's why we're focusing on uh, Kubernetes deployments right now. Awesome. Thanks. Any other any other questions? Going once, hey, going twice. This is John May. I have one quick uh, question. On, um, sure. On the the application or environment monitoring, can you do that on pre production staging systems? So that you know, we work with a lot of the, the large companies, and what they often do is they'll they'll create all their builds and everything, but they'll build it all to a staging point before they decide to do a, a bigger release. So, yes. um, so it's something that I could see them wanting to be able to see the impact before they go to production. On these uh, that, that is totally possible. Uh, the user, uh, if uh, I believe we've already integrated uh, a, an environment tag in the, uh, in the user interface, so that we extra, uh, when when a Kubernetes, if they're using Kubernetes, if they deploy to uh, if they deploy to Kubernetes, we already extract an environment tag uh, from uh, from the metrics. What if they what if they use um, they have internal systems? So I used to work with Macy's, and they had sixteen hundred servers already in place for testing. So they they may want to monitor all those 1600. Is that possible? Uh, it, uh, Prometheus can totally do that, but it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's not really on our, our target to provide that. 
because they're running their own custom deployment. Uh, eventually, uh, one of the options will be if they're running a if they're running their own Prometheus setup, uh, you'll be able to select which Prometheus you can already select which Prometheus server you want to query from. So if they uh, if they want to integrate their Prometheus in production and staging and wherever they run Prometheus, that's already possible to integrate. Uh, it's not. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say it's great yet, but it's 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 totally possible. Sure. So I, I brought it up to Job a little bit and put a, an issue up there, or a request, or what have you. But um, that's a huge problem for large companies. Is we have these teams and they want to test, but they don't even know what servers are available and when, and if somebody's already on that system. So yep. a way to sort of self-select those things would be a huge boon to them, and they were, you know. Uh, I was working in a different company and they were paying a lot of money to have that capability available to them. Um, yeah, that, 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 it sounds like they need Kubernetes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it sounds like Review Apps is the solution there, right? Well, they, they, want, they have a lot of legacy apps and they wanted to manage, you know, if I've got 1,600 servers, I have different teams wanting to test at different times in that environment. And so yep. I... They're always changing those environments, but those are hard servers or, or, or VMs, right? Yeah. It's just spinning up something they're just running on different VMs that they have, but they have a <laughs> lot of them and then they never know who's in what system at what time. Right. And it's a big problem for them. Yeah. I, I, would, uh, I have, uh, this is totally unrelated to GitLab deployment, um, uh, but I, I, have a, I have several recommendations for things that they can do, but of course, this all requires possibly changing and and and, and adjusting their infrastructure. Um, is things that I call uh, there's a there's a couple of different projects. Uh, one is called uh, Metal as a Service M A A S uh, by Canonical, the Ubuntu uh, team, and it's basically um, an API service that turns your your bare metal into uh, a cloud provider. Mm -hmm. uh, so and and then of course I I uh, I highly recommend Kubernetes uh, because then they can just take those servers that they ha already have and just deploy Kubernetes to it and then they get all the dynamic things. Yes, uh, Mass.io is super great. Uh, or actually, I don't actually know. I've not I've not tried it. I saw uh, I saw a nice demo by the Canonical people. It looked pretty good. Um, uh, I've used similar systems uh, like uh, Tumblr released one in open source called Collins, uh, but that's th that's a lot of plumbing for a developer team to add, uh, depending on on how much control of the data center they have. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 John, the what what they have right now is that they have more changes than staging environments, basically. Right. So that's why they continually do this. I think it's called musical chairs. Yeah, where where people where people have to move around, so and, so, and what so they the, really need is they need Kubernetes for that. Well, yeah. I'm, they're, they're, what they're doing is they're they're literally keeping it on a spreadsheet, or they're sitting down and having two hour meetings, you know, um, with teams every two weeks to figure out who needs what and when, so that they can make sure that people don't you know bump into each other and have someone already testing on something and someone comes in. Yep. Puts, Big change and also yeah, no, I, 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 I know all about that kind of thing. Yeah, um, and, and the, the, the thing is, you can do two things. You can play the musical chairs better, um, but in the end, that's you're still playing musical chairs and everyone's distracted. The other thing is just to get more chairs. But what they don't want to do is buy more servers because they're expensive. So what you do is you reuse the chairs. So you have one chair, and then three people can sit on them. And that's what Kubernetes and review apps um, in GitLab allow to, to use one server, have three people sit on it. Um, and if you're not, if you're not no, no one is sitting on the chair at the same time. The problem right now is every chair has, to, has a name on it. Now it will have three names and there could be three people sitting. That's what containers allow. Um, I'm stretching this metaphor too far, <laughs> but the, the, the idea is that, that every change gets its own dedicated app and they, they, they should leverage Kubernetes and, and GitLab review apps for that. Okay. Cause uh, there are companies paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for this capability. Yep. 
Yeah, I think the question is, is you know, should we build a feature for sort of legacy applications that might not or might be cost prohibitive to move to the Kubernetes model, uh, or just wait until they you know uh, move yeah. far enough along to embrace these things? And and this is why this is why for that I would recommend something like uh, Mass.io or um, uh, well. But, and I can probably take this offline with you, but I think there's my goal in this was that if we can show that or make that process easier and have these teams then drive whatever they need and then pick it directly from GitLab, that would be a really efficient system for them because then we'd already be able to see safe to go into this system or that system because we already know it's there and available and nobody else scheduled into it. Sort of a pick whatever's available and move it into it and go up. Yeah, but that, but that's still the model of 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 uh, making the musical chairs go more efficient. And the what well, the GitLab direction is going is just adding more chair or making sure that people can share the chairs so that right. everyone can have a have a have a seat. Yeah. Um, and and and. They don't have to like be architect their app. Like, almost every app you can put in a container and deploy. It's a bit ugly, but it yeah. works. Yep. Yeah. The 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 way containers can, you can build a container that is one file or a thousand files, and in an or an entire operating system in a container. Um, so it it's it seems daunting at first, but uh, it it's it's much better once you have that model. Okay, great. Um, there's some some options there that uh, I may want to explore with you. With yeah, I yeah, I, I would take it, John. I th I would take it up with Josh. Josh, are, are you okay. are you okay with that? Yep, of course. Wonderful. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Yep. All right. Uh, anything else? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Ben.